Good morning, everybody. Welcome to November's Breakfast Club. Hard to believe that we are already here, and after today, we are down to just one Breakfast Club for 2022. The time is definitely flying. Good morning, Kelly. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Anne. Hello, uh, Diana and crew um, over in Ridgecrest. Norma, sorry you're not feeling good. Hope you feel better. Hello, Jennifer in Carpinteria. Hi, Tommy. Um, and this six pack over in San Luis. Hello, Paula in uh, South Carolina. We'll see you online for our Zoom class right after this ends. Um, good morning, Kathy in Florida. Hi, Gracie. Um, good morning, Amira and Gloria. Nice to see you. Hello, um, Emma. Hi, Cindy, also part of the six pack. So we are here. It is November. Um, we're halfway through November. I cannot um, believe it. Uh, good morning, Tracy, up in um, Oregon. Hi, Christy. We'll see you also after. Oh, Pat, 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 Pat. Speaking of Pat, so good morning, Pat from cold north uh, Idaho. I have to tell you, though, um, the shop was 52 degrees inside this morning, so we are all just shivering in here um, when we got in. Um, good morning, Sharon. We'll see you online later today for Zoom also. Hi, Cranston's. Hi, Judy. Hi, Susan up in Oregon. So I'm going to put a picture up. Um, this is Pat and I up in Northern Idaho. Uh, Pat is um, Christy's mom and it is always fun to um, meet people as they come in. So when people are traveling and they stop through and see it, but I do have to tell you a funny story. I didn't think anybody was shorter than Christy McAdoo um, until I met her mom. And so we went and I put my arm around her to give her a hug and I said, stand up, Pat. And she goes, I am. <laughs> And so I had to bend down to take the picture, but I love when you guys come in and we um, see you guys um, and meet because once again, through COVID, we have so many people from all over the country um, and I don't get to see you guys when we're doing these types of lives, but I'll give an example um, when we do our Zoom classes and I'll use um, Paula in South Carolina as an example. We get to interact and we get to talk and chat and see each other and I really do and really have um, enjoyed um, meeting people over the last couple of years. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, Gloria and Amira, um, who is Amira is Gloria's granddaughter, if you guys haven't caught on through all these years. Um, but, you know, we have met through Zoom. We chat through Zoom. When Amira is around, she gets on and says hi to us. So it's always very, very fun. Hello, Terry. Hi, Kathy. Um, Oh, it's 23 degrees in Oregon. Well, I don't know what it is here, but 52 inside the shop. That was a little cold. Um, hello, Constance. Um, let's see. The um, uh, Oh, we have a um, North Pole tiered trade, Gloria. That's our Zoom um, later today. So speaking of Zoom, we're going to be announcing um, more and more Zoom classes. Um, people are really um, enjoying them. We just finished up uh, Anna's Dutch Garden. I'm going to show you guys a project today that I had so much fun making that we actually are going to do an in-person class and a Zoom class. And you guys will actually have time to get this project done as a uh, gift for the holidays. So we'll be teaching that at the beginning of December and we will uh, talk about that. Um, so those of you that are new, welcome. We always do a show and tell. Uh, we do have uh, your guys' package this month was green. Um, we think it's a fun project, um, but we always think all the projects are fun. Uh, we do a show and tell. We'll go over our project. We'll show you guys uh, what's happening, what's new. Uh, we do give away some prizes and all of that good stuff. So let's dive in to our November show and tell. All right, we're going to start with uh, Christy Cranson. So this was part of the Harvest Table Kimberbell event that we did. So she got her runner done. She got all of her napkins and napkin rings done. So she's ready for Thanksgiving dinner. And this was a really fun project. So this was um, a curated embroidery design from Kimberbell. I want to say it was called Home for the Holidays. I can't get it right out of my head right this second. But one of the designs was these sets of houses. Um, and you could do them as stitching. You could put um, fabric down on them. 
So um, all is calm and then um, all is calm, all is bright. So those were the house pillows that she did on the front, but on the back, she added these maps. So um, this one says distance means so little uh, when someone needs so much. So that was one of the backs of the pillows that she did. And then the other one was a map of the world that then said the exact same thing. The distance means uh, so little uh, when someone means so much. So those were really fun gifts that she made. Um, and I love the fact that she used both sides of um, the pillows. So the front sides are definitely holiday themed. Um, the back sides then would not be holiday themed. So they'd be able to be used all year. So great job, Christy, on those. Uh, Gloria up in Martinez, she's been busy. So she makes bibs. So she got these ones done. And then these are an adult size bib. Followed by a fun sugar skull pillowcase. It looks like she did some ruffle ribbon or ruffled lace up there for part of the trim. And then she finished this fun project. This is called a peekaboo quilt. I'm not really sure if you guys can tell, but where you see the um, the Mickey Mouse on there, those actually are opened and they're three dimensional. So you they open up and then you guys can see the Mickey Mouse uh, print behind it. And then there is her backing. So great job on um, that, Gloria. Cindy, part of the six pack over in uh, San Luis. Uh, she got these baskets finished up. And then she did this cute uh, pumpkin. Um, not sure if it's a wall hanging or a pillow, but I'm sure it could be either. And then she finished up this uh, zipper pouch. I, what was the name of that? I can't even think of the name of it. This was one of the free patterns that we did inside of our Tipsy Tuesday group. Um, if you're not already joined that group, you are going to want to join that before Tuesday. So that was one of the pouches she made out of Star Wars. So I'm sure someone's getting some goodies in there when she gifts it. Karen, part of the six pack, or it might be the eight pack. I can't remember how many are over there now, um, over in Ridgecrest. She has been working on um, learning uh, long arm quilting with a computer. And so she's done some amazing work every month and it's been very fun to see it. So gorgeous project there, Karen. She did these um, embroidered pillows and her note on there was she put the zipper um, bag, uh, the zipper on the back of the pillows, which is something she learned um, from us here at Thimbletown. So it's always nice to see when you guys use our techniques or um, we've helped you learn a technique that you guys use in other projects. And then this was the cabin fever table runner we did. So she bought, came in and got some of the uh, farm fabric that we had. So the, uh, the grays and the topes and the reds. And so she made this, uh, we had done it out of a Christmas and a Halloween or no, a fall and a Halloween. No, a fall and a Christmas. See, I can't even get this right. But one thing that she did in a conversation was she wanted quilting on this. So what she actually did is layered it with a piece of muslin and then she quilted it and then she put on the backing and enveloped it so then she doesn't have to have any binding with all of those corners. So it looks really great. I can see the quilting. I'm not sure if you guys can. Diana, also part of the six or eight pack over in Ridgecrest. So that's our six pack East. And then of course we have the other group which we'll call six pack West. She did her thankful banner um, from I believe last month's breakfast club. Uh, she had left a note in the email to me that she, uh, with her pictures that she was looking forward to making these for other, um, holidays and other events. So we really do hope you guys, uh, put that, uh, that pattern and that font, uh, to good use. She wrapped up her, uh, Halloween Kimberbell wall hanging. And then she embroidered these really cute, um, I guess they would be a version of paper dolls uh, for her grandkids. And then um, she embroidered this also. So a uh, first Christmas teddy bear. Christy's been busy. Uh, she made another one of our coffee um, quilt projects. 
She finished up her spiky table runner. That was a class. Uh, we did that via Zoom. She took that class here in person. She finished up, I don't know, maybe August or September's Breakfast Club with the apples. She finished up her uh, Happy Fall You All wall hanging. That was a class with Vanessa from Fabric Confetti that we did uh, probably six or eight weeks ago. She also did her thankful banner. She wrapped up her uh, Twilight Boulevard uh, bench pillow. She's been busy. Uh, this was the spider pouch uh, in the hoop embroidered pouch that we did earlier this year. Christy, I like how you added uh, and made the spider orange where I left mine and made it white. I do like that you did that. She finished up some mug rugs. And she finished up her Christmas bench pillow. Can't think of it off the top of my head what the name of that one is. So great job on that. Oh, and there is the um, Christmas version of the Cabin Fever um, table runner. She was busy. Tommy over in um, San Luis, she did the, um, she does these placemats. And this is a really fun thing. So at the top, she has a snowman mug rug, and then she has a pumpkin wall hanging. Um, and then the rest of these are placemats. These are placemats that they do for the senior meals on wheels. And what they do is they do a holiday theme on one side. And then on the back side, they just do something different. So then they can use them. They can use those uh, placemats uh, throughout the year. So I think those are uh, very, very nice contributions to a really good program. She did a charity quilt with this cute cat on the front of it. And then what she told me is she appliqued the cat on after the fact. And so she has the cat outline also uh, that shows on the backing of the project. So I think that's a really fun one and a cat lover will definitely love it. Gloria in New York, she finished up this great bag. And uh, this poinsettia embroidery, I think that is on a towel, if I'm correct. This was the other side of the bag. I guess I got my pictures out of order that we showed first. So very nice. It's got purse feet on it. Looks great job on that, Gloria. Another bag that she finished up. Looks like it's got leather handles. And then another version of that bag. Um, all finished up. So great job on getting those projects completed, Gloria. Sharon over um, in Barstow, she's getting ready, gearing up for Christmas, making last minute um, notebooks. So all done in her embroidery machine. There is another set of them. They look fantastic. Tracy up in Oregon did one of the three yard quilt patterns. So very cute. She said she was able to do it in an afternoon. So a fast and fun project, which is what everybody seems to really be liking and wanting these days. She also finished up her Halloween um, Boulevard pillow, Twilight Boulevard pillow. And she finished up her uh, thankful um, bunting or banner that we did for last month's uh, Christmas, uh, or excuse me, last month's Breakfast Club project. So everybody, a great job. Um, we love once again to see um, the girls are giving you guys a round of applause behind me. Um, the We love to see what you guys do. It is always inspiring, especially when we see projects maybe that we need to finish or we haven't done. So um, Tracy did really good. Let's just bear. Good morning, Karen in cold Missouri. Um, hi, Nancy. Hi, Lini. Good morning, uh, Jacqueline. Hi, Sandy. Um, you guys really got a lot done. Um, hi, Sandy. Hi, Robin. Uh, Debbie up in Madeira. Kathy, it cannot be cold in Florida. It just can't be. <laughs> There's just no way. Um, but no, I know it does get there for Jennifer. Love the shirt. Yes, this is a um, another Irene creation. I'm not sure if I wore this one yet before. 
I might have wore it on a different one, but I don't think I wore it on Breakfast Club. Wait until you guys see my shirt for Christmas, which we'll, well, we will obviously have on next month. So we're going to just dive in and talk about a um, few new things and some of the things that we have coming up. And then we still have lots to talk about. We still also then have our um, project to reveal. So we're just going to remind everybody about the five uh, yard quilt. This is um, when we were moving some stuff around, we've had leftover kits on this. So this is the five yard quilt that we did for you guys. Um, this is definitely for the coffee lovers out there. We put Minky on the back of our sample um, and it is just a great, great, quick uh, project. You know, Tracy showed a project in there that was out of a three yard. This is a five yard. So when you do a five yard project, they are just a little bit um, larger um, for you guys. <clears throat> We've been doing the Riley Blake uh, Table Topper of the Month. So I want to just revisit uh, the last three months of the year because these seem to be, um, they're some of our favorites. We've liked basically all of them. We usually do, but we really all seem to like fall. So we did have the, <clears throat> um, the fall. So this one is actually was an October for October. And that has the pieced pumpkins. It has all of the patchwork in front. We, um, I can hold that up actually for you guys. So this is just a really fun um, table topper. Now, obviously it's a little late to get the pumpkins done, but it's a perfect time to get your table topper of the month so that you'll have it um, ready for next year. We put a very neutral back on there so that we could really see the pumpkin quilting that we did on that. Um, so really a fun thing. We'll show you um, the November and December one when we get around the table. Those of you that might not know about Tipsy Tuesday or Mystery Monday, they are two private Facebook groups that we have. You can join those um, by just going to, you know, Thimbletown Tipsy Tuesday um, and ask to join. We do um, demos in there. We will show new things. Uh, we do free patterns in there. So Tipsy Tuesday is for sewing and quilting. Mystery Monday is for machine embroidery. We're going to announce something a little bit later that you will not want to not be a part of those groups. So I will go um, through that with you guys. But one of the things that we did um, on our last Tipsy Tuesday was the chenille um, scarf. Amy, there's some flannel right next to you. Um, is the chenille, the faux chenille scarf. Now this thing, even when I, because this was at home when I did the last Tipsy Tuesday, thank you. When I did the last Tipsy Tuesday, um, and when I brought it in, the girls even said how soft this is. So we actually are using five layers of flannel to make this. It is a fun project. So there's a pattern which is called the faux um, chenille scarf. But the thing with the flannel that we have um, in the shop, so all the flannel in our shop is a double brush. So it's the same on each side. Okay. Um, there is flannel that is just printed on the top, which is the way they print fabric. So with that, um, you have a wrong and a right side. You don't have that with this double brush flannel. So when you do go in and you chenille that all up, um, when you go in and chenille it all up, it just really makes for a nice warm scarf. I probably should have had this scarf on this morning because we were all freezing when we walked in the door. I guess it's that time to start leaving the heaters on um, at night. So you'll find this, it uses uh, two yards of flannel. We have several bundles on the website. Um, if you want to do it, you can make this um, in an afternoon and throw it in. So there's still plenty of time now that everybody's cold and apparently even Florida is cold. Um, we can make, sorry, Kathy, I just have to tease you. We never think of Florida as cold. Um, but you still can make these as gifts, um, for the holiday. All right. So I am really, really excited. Marissa, can we see this in the camera? Yes. Oh, so Marissa says, Marissa says, arguably, uh, people don't think of California as cold. I think everybody does think of California as uh, 
palm trees and movie stars, right? Not the case. So we're all, like I said, we're complaining because I think it's going to be in the 60s today. Um, Marissa, is this in the camera or should I raise it? Okay. I am really excited. How are we here? Better? Okay. So this is a new fanny pack bag and I'm super excited about it. So I want to just give out a little thing. I am always so happy when people say, hey, I did this um, and you taught it to me or I loved your technique to it. I'll just use Karen over in Ridgecrest. She used that zipper technique for the back of her pillows, whether we taught that in a summer class pass or if we taught that in um, a Mystery Monday or a Tipsy Tuesday. I've shown it so many times, but it always makes me happy. I have to just shout out Anne who has... Um, taught me so many things over the years where I would have never um, tackled projects when it comes to bags or things like that had I not had um, her teaching. So I think in the industry, we learn different things from different people. Um, I'm a big time machine embroiderer, so I'm always sharing tips and tricks. So hats off um, to everybody that shares their tips and tricks and techniques and is willing to teach other people. I wouldn't have taken on this new fanny pack had I uh, not had Anne's teaching over the years. So this is called the Ferris Fanny Pack. Um, this fanny pack has already been claimed. Originally, Marissa picked the fabric. Um, her mom saw it, and so now her mom wants the fanny pack. So Marissa only gets possession of it when it is at Thimbletown. So um, I love this. This is actually the medium size. You guys, there is a size smaller and a size larger in the uh, pattern. This does have an adjustable strap on it so that you can wear it as a fanny pack. You can wear it as a cross body. There's all different kinds of ways that you can wear it. It does have um, the lobster clamps on it. And then it does have also, Christy, your favorite, it has two zippers. So it has a back pocket and then it also has a front pocket. This is completely um, fully lined. So the Ferris bag is, the Ferris fanny pack has a pattern. And then we have um, zippers in two different colors currently. So we have white zippers with um, gunmetal hardware. And then we have white zippers with um, the nickel um, hardware. Now, one of these will actually make, one pack of zippers will actually make four bags. So those of you that are going to make them uh, for kids and grandkids, for yourself and different things, one package of zippers will make four bags with one pull um, left over. And then we also have the hardware um, for these. So this has the O-rings, it has the, the clasps, and then it also has the um, adjustable strap buckle. What do you call that? Adjustable strap buckle? A buckle. a buckle. That's what we're calling it. Um, so we have those to match the current zippers um, that we have here. Now the fun part for this is going to be, let me put her back because I'm going to knock her over. Um, the fun part too for this is we are going to offer this as an in-person class, um, which is going, it's on the website. I want to say it is Saturday the 9th or 10th. Marissa's going to tell me, I can't remember the date off the top of my head. And then we're also going to offer an in-person Zoom class. Now the Zoom class that we're going to do is going to be a sew along class. So sometimes in Zoom classes, people like to watch and then go back. But I will, um, it's on the 10th? Okay. Zoom is the 8th. And then, so we'll do the Ferris Zoom class on the 8th of December. And then the 10th of December will be an in-person at the shop class. But we will sew along. I made this bag, cutting it out um, all the way to completion in about three hours. So it is not a difficult project to do. So you guys can make this in probably five or six hours and it'll be done. It really goes um, together quite easily and quickly. So we love it. Fanny packs have been all the rage. And then I did love that the pattern had a smaller size and a larger size. So this is the medium and I want to say it's about 15 inches wide. Um, it is the perfect size. Girls are shaking their head. I did remember that one. So that will be the uh, Ferris 
um, fanny pack. It also, once again, can be a cross um, body bag. So um, let's see. Hello, Nancy. Oh, Nancy loves her Tipsy Tuesday. Um, hello, Colleen. Good morning, Mom. Hi, Carol. Hi, Juanita. Um, so that was a fun project there. This is a new uh, quilt that we did with a really fun strip set from Batik Textiles. It's all in grays. It's called Shades of Gray. So you can buy the strip set by itself or you can buy it in a kit. Now, our kit does have yellow as our accent. Um, it was kind of a toss up of which way to what direction to go color wise because um, some people might want red or hot pink or lime green, whatever you want. The kit will have the inner border, the outer border, the binding, and then it does have the yellow, but we're talking only about three-fourths of a yard, so you can put that yellow in your stash if you want to switch it out with a color that you have there. So it's not a big part of the kit, um, but that way if you did want to switch it out, you can. Uh, you can purchase a pattern individually. You guys can purchase um, the kit or the strip sets, however you want to do it. We don't often see gray, um, and these batiks from Batik Textiles are fantastic. So um, grab those um, while we have them. And once again, the kit is easy to change out the yellow, should you not. Yellow is my favorite color, and I just wanted to do something besides red. Um, we do a lot of black and red, a lot of gray and red, so I wanted to do something, but... I figure down the road, this will be probably one I keep. So we threw yellow in it and I think it turned out fantastic. The little accent pinwheels, um, easy to make um, and you guys will definitely love it. This was another one of the chenille scarves um, just to give you kind of, that was a striped fabric. So you can see what a nice, um, what a nice texture these get from doing it. Um, there's a chenille cutter to make life much easier and all of that good stuff. We did also the um, table topper that I will show you. So this was the November table topper. Uh, so very rich, definitely fall colors. Um, once again, these are all finishing about 30 by 30 or 36 by 36. 36 by 36. Um, and they have been, once again, really fun to make. Um, the upcoming winter one that we'll show you guys next month has snowflakes on it, and we really also love that too. So that was the other one. Once again, those of you that haven't seen them, they all do come in the Riley Blake uh, boxes. They're magnetic. Um, they're printed inside, so you have a really nice box to put um, notions or knickknacks in, give them as a gift or things like that. Those do have the patterns to go. Then we have, I just left this up because this was such a hit. This is the Quilt 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 project. We used a fat quarter, um, in case you missed that last month, we used the fat quarter bundle of the uh, tiny dots and tiny stripes from Tula Pink. We used the uh, Wonder Curve ruler from So Kind of Wonderful. And then we used the um, Text Me um pattern this has i believe oh it's got five patterns in there plus all of the letters and all of the numbers we love so kind of wonderful patterns and projects we have done a lot of them um we actually have a yearly thing that we're going to start next year um that goes along with this so that will be um really really fun to do don't forget if you need a last minute christmas gift or something like that we do have a few of our Lazy Daisy. Uh, we did a Halloween and a Christmas. So the Lazy Daisy um, table topper um, is available. Once again, we have it all done in Christmas prints. Those of you that have embroidery machines, I will be more than happy to send you out the circle to finish it. Um, you just applicate it on of your choice. If you have an embroidery machine, we did digitize that one for you guys. And then our fine, oh, we have two more. So we're going to talk about this. This is a fantastic new panel. It is digitally printed. Um, beautiful snowy Christmas tree out in the forest. It's okay to fail when we do projects. Um, and that's something that is sometimes hard to do. So we picked, and I'll say we, I'll take all the 
the blame for it. We had a new pattern. We went back and forth. We decided that this would work. Um, I sent the quilt off to be made and I hated it. But I was like, oh, you know what? It'll be okay once it's quilted. Maybe it's just the photography of the quilt. So we get this quilt done and bound and I hate it. Um, and it was really just a wall hanging. So, and it wasn't the pattern by any stretch. It was the fabrics that I chose. Um, and sometimes we just make mistakes. That's why we make so many samples before we ever cut anything, because we want to make sure that they, number one, work, and then number two, that they look right. So when you guys make a mistake like that, and it's not necessarily a mistake, it just didn't come out the way that you wanted it, it's okay to cut it up and just start over or finish it. In my, in this instance, I'm going to tell you, it was made, quilted, and bound, hated it, um, took it to Ann the other day, and I said, this just isn't going to work. I have tried to love this thing for two months, and it just wasn't going to happen. So we cut off the borders, and it's okay. So this was done. So it had a really fun ribbon border on it. The problem was the ribbon portion, which would have been the lighter, the front side of the ribbon, didn't contrast with this really pretty background. This needed to be lighter or this needed to be darker in order for it to work. So as you can see, it was done quilted. It had a binding on it and everything and it didn't work. So we just went back to the original plan, which was a quilted, um, was a quilted door hanger or wall hanging. So those are digital prints. You guys can find those in the breakfast club tab. Also, um, it's, um, $9.99 and it's called the festive beauty panel and that panel is absolutely gorgeous um, once again it's just a quick project some of us don't always want to decorate or we know somebody that um, doesn't decorate and we can give them just a panel to put up on the wall and it just um, it's kind of like the um, placemats that Tommy does for the senior meals on wheels I know those placemats mean the world to the people that are um, receiving them something like this I know does the same and then this is the new um, Christmas uh, table topper from Riley Blake. So that has the Christmas trees, the stars, and the plaid. Once again, it is in a collector's block uh, box from Riley Blake. Really, really fun. I love how um, these fabrics look like the, they are a light and a dark, but I love how uh, that plaid comes together. Um, love the Christmas trees, love the stars. We did Christmas tree quilting on it. Um, and that looks fantastic. So speaking of um, Christmas and Christmas quilting, did you know there are only 36 days left um, until Christmas? I know that is absolutely horrifying to think about, but 36 days left until Christmas. Any of you that still need um, long arming done, there is still time to get your quilts in and get them long armed. So you can contact us at the shop and we can direct you for shipping them in. Um, or if you are local and you want to drop them off, you guys can also um, do that. So if you have any questions about that, please um, let, um, let us know. So let me see what else is on my list. Um, so we have... 36 days um, until Christmas. Next week, so our normal week is Wednesday through Saturday. Um, next week, Thursday is um, Thanksgiving. So we would always close a half day early. So we'll actually be closed next week. We are always closed for Black Friday because everybody's out um, busy working. So we'll be out of the shop next week. We will be doing shipping um, so anything you guys get over the weekend, we will be getting that shipped out to you. And then we will be reopened on Saturday, which is the 26th for small business Saturday. So we will have a big small business Saturday promotion in store. And then we will do some small business Saturday promotions online, um, for all of you that are not local and would like to participate in those. So stay tuned for details about that. We'll send out an email about it. We'll do some social media about it so you guys will all know what's going on. Now, I talked to you earlier about Mystery Monday and Tipsy Tuesday. We are going to do, so it happens to be that um, in November, 
um, the week's lineup. So we, um, our Tuesdays um, and our Mondays are on the same week where normally they're on opposite. So Monday, uh, we have some stuff to show off in our Mystery Monday group. However, we are having an exclusive embroidery Black Friday sale in our Mystery Monday group. So those of you that are in the group, you guys don't have to do anything. Those of you that have not joined our Mystery Monday, you will want to go on and join uh, Mystery Monday, Thimbletown Mystery Monday, I think is um, the easiest way to search it on Facebook. We will post the link again on our regular Facebook page. Um, so that will be a um, exclusive Black Friday sale um, on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we are going to do a Tipsy Tuesday. We've got a free pattern to give you guys again. Um, another cute little uh, quick project for the holidays. So we have a free pattern. We'll go over that. And then we're going to do a Tipsy Tuesday uh, sale from there, uh, exclusive to the group. So it will not be broadcast on the regular Facebook page. It will only be broadcast on the um, within those two groups. So make sure you join those and stay tuned for those. Um, did we put up the Small Business Saturday graphic? Okay, so remember the Small Business Saturday. So let's dive in to our project of the month. All right. So we are going to start. Let me get this opened up. I think we have three of these left. So if you didn't get one ahead of time, I think there are three left. You cannot purchase them online any longer. You'll have to call the store after 1030 and Amy uh, can get you um, a package. So we're going to start. We've got some red fabric, some brown fabric, some yellow fabric. I love this print. This is a Riley Blake print, one of my favorite greens. Uh, we've got some more brown. We've got some really fun um, white uh, tonal background. Let's see, there is fusible fleece. There is Pelon 805, also Wonder Under. Um, as a reminder, there's a bumpy side. That's the side you fuse first. The smooth side is the release paper once you're ready to adhere it to your project. We have some more red. This is a really fun red print. It's got a little bit of metallic in it. This was a Robert Kaufman Christmas print. We have a wooden dowel. Of course, we have a pattern. And then we have a string of Christmas lights. And our project this month is, drum roll please, we need to get some, oh, see I don't need music, I got the girls, they got my drum roll. Uh, we have a spool, a Christmas tree, where it stand is a sewing spool, so a really fun project for your sewing room or anywhere in your house. So this is simply made by, um, first of all, there's a fantastic diagram that Marissa did, but you're going to be making a uh, flying geese. You'll be adding um, uh, corners to these guys, make the tree, adding corners just like you guys all know how to do. This star can be embroidered on. There is a template for it on the back. Um, you can um, embroider it, you can um, just do it like I did, fuse it down and quilt over it. I did crosshatch quilting on it. Um, Marissa added the Christmas lights. This can be done with or without the Christmas lights. We thought it would be really fun to embellish it. We had been looking at buttons and different things that would be easy to put on there. We came across Christmas lights and they're all set. And then I just got in trouble because um, I just... I was told it was delicate and I did the lights and I did not mean to. One of them popped off, so Marissa will have to fix that later. In the back, we did our um, little folded um, corners here to add on the um, pockets to put the dowel in. You guys can just use a, a hanger that you might have. You guys can add tabs on there. There's all kinds of things you can do. Once again, you can do it with or um, without the Christmas lights. So really, really a fun project. 
and um, it's our last Christmas project of the year. I don't, well, we didn't do another one, but I feel like we've had so many Christmas projects lately. Um, I hope you guys like that project. I think it is really, um, really cute. The, um, we need to give away some prizes here. So we give away a breakfast club to anybody. It goes to anybody that purchases a breakfast club project. And that winner is Donna Anderson. So congratulations, Donna you get our December uh, Breakfast Club um, project. So Amy will get you all signed up for that. No need to do anything there. So speaking of Breakfast Club, so we're approaching 2023. We are looking for ways to change Breakfast Club up, things that you guys might want to see us do different. So if you guys would send us a message, send an email, give us a call of what you might want to see different um, for Breakfast Club 2023. We have some ideas in there, but we would really, really love to hear and see what you guys might want to do. Um, we're hoping to make some uh, and changes and announcements to that for our next Breakfast Club, which is, I believe, the 17th which is the 17th of December. So the 17th of December will be our final uh, Breakfast Club of 2022. Hard to believe this wraps up either, I think our fifth or sixth year of Breakfast Club, um, which just is astounding to me. Um, so we'll do that. Now, we always um, do a gift certificate for Show and Tell. So the winner today for the Show and Tell is... Oh, Karen, uh, Karen Melindy Zahn. So Karen over in Ridgecrest, she's part of either the six pack or the eight pack. So we'll just call it the six pack East. Congratulations, Karen. Amy will email you out a uh, gift certificate. As a quick reminder, um, you guys have, um, you're welcome, Donna. You guys have, um, Thanksgiving coming up. We are closed this week. We will reopen. Uh, so we're here today. I'm teaching a Zoom class today and tomorrow. And then uh, we'll get shipping and stuff out this week. And then uh, we'll be back open for small business Saturday. We will do uh, both in person and we will do some small business Saturday promotions for all of you out of town and out of state uh, because we do appreciate your support. Also, we'll be doing a uh, Black Friday sale um, as part of our Mystery Monday and as part of our Tipsy Tuesday this week. So we've got some demos to show you at the beginning, and then we're going to do um, some Black Friday sales for you uh, that day also, or that evening, I should say. So those both start at 6 p.m. We're back to standard time, so 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time Breakfast Club, but once again, December 17th. Congratulations to Donna for winning next month's Breakfast Club. Congratulations to Karen for winning uh, Show and Tell. You can always send in whether you purchase a Breakfast Club project or not. You can send in uh, the things you've been working on to photos at thimbletown.com and we will include you in our uh, Breakfast Club. I hope everybody has a safe and fun and happy uh, holiday week. Um, happy Thanksgiving. We are very thankful that you are here and part of our Thimbletown family. So we hope you guys all enjoy your week. We will see some of you on Zoom in about 30 minutes. Have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you soon.